So the Power BI team have given us a new feature called Quick Message Suggestion. Want to know how to get it and what it can do? And also, does this mean you'll never have to learn DAX? Well, let's jump over to my Power BI desktop and I'll show you. So first things first, all you need to do to get this feature is go into your options under options and settings. And then once you're in there, go down to your preview features and then ensure quick measure suggestions is ticked. Once you do OK, all you need to do is restart your Power BI desktop and then you have the feature under quick measure. So once that opens up, you can see we now have this new section called suggestions. Now, if this is grayed out and it has a little icon over the top that says that your admin has not enabled Q&As, what you need to do is if you're the admin is go into your admin portal and then under tenant settings and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then if it wasn't already enabled the preview and then also allow users to leave their geography. Now, one thing to point out about this one here, it states quick measure suggestions are currently processed in the US. When this setting is enabled, users will get quick measure suggestions for data outside the US. And this in a nutshell is saying that the data to be able to actually function with this particular feature will mean it will leave your country of origin. And if you have sensitive data, or if, say if you're in the UK or any other European country where you've got GDPR, it's probably best to not actually enable this. If you are gonna play around with it, use dummy data because it'll be a lot safer and you don't want to get yourself into trouble. And as I said, once those two parts have been enabled, then you can see that you have suggestions and it's no longer grayed out. Then you can click on it and then you start to have a whole area where you can start to put in what you want to do as your question. What do you want an answer to and what do you want to be able to create DAX from? This is very similar to the question and answers that you get from the visual in Power BI, which allows you to type in a question and then it will give you an answer in a form of a graph. This time it's going to give you it in the form of DAX. What we can do using the data set that I've got here, we want to be able to find out, say, because I've got the year set to 2017, Let's just do a simple one of the sales. So we've got the sale amount there and also we've got the sale amount down here. So if we type in sales in 2017 and then we do generate, we can see down here, it's given us the same number which we've got there. So we've got 733 and then 215, 215, yeah, 733. And then down here, you can see the DAX and then you can just add it and then also it gives you a breakdown of what it's actually done. So it's saying total sale where year of order date is 2017. And it's given you a measure where it's done calculate, summed, and then it's done keep filter year. And then it's filtered it by that. In mine, I, because I had a date table, I was able to filter by date. But this enables you to be able to actually set a filter based on a year if you've got different dates in there. So that's quite a good DAX formula you got there that works and does what it needs to do. Now let's try, let's try state. So if we go into, let's do California. So if we go for, for California state, there we go. So we click on that and then generate. We can see that is not the same. Let's have a look at the DAX. All sales, oh, it seems to be using my measures. Now in my data set, I've already created measures here. I thought it would just use whatever columns. So it seems to actually use measures you've already created, which is interesting. And it says all sales when that's not correct because my all sales measure is removing all states so it can give you the percentage of sales. That's what that's being used for in this particular case here. So for some reason, that is definitely not the number. Maybe that is it for all years. It's date there, so that won't make sense. So what was the difference when we went to the other one? Let's go back and let's have a look. Go back to my quick measures and let's do that again and then generate. Yeah, so we can see here some sales. So that's basically doing the column. So that one did it, but for some reason it decided to use a measure. There you go, something to watch out for. If you suddenly find you've got different measures, it might actually end up using your measure and not creating something from scratch using the actual columns that are already in your data set. As that sales, I know I do have a total sales here, which is just basically a sum. Let's do total sales first, see if that works and gives me the same result. Does, and it's using the total sales measure there. 
And it's then keep filter. So it's basically giving the same information. So let's try and do that now with California. So is it for California? Here we go, California state, generate. And now we have the correct number. So yeah, there's there's one thing there that obviously needs to be looked at. So total sales, whether year or the date, I think. Yeah, so that's correct. So that's, yeah. So one thing you need to be wary of is obviously if it's using different ones and obviously it's how you do the wording. Let's try to see what's the difference between years 2017 and 2016. The 2016 was 609,000 and that was 733. So basically you need a difference of 24, 124. 124,000. So if we go, what was the total sale difference between, was it 2016 and 2017? Why is that not working? There we go. So let's see what it gives us. That is not correct. Saying, why it's giving us an in. It's done variables, which makes sense, but it's taking away the variable where it's including both and then doing total sales. Yeah, so let's have a look to see what's going on here. It's basically going measure value, total sales is there, and then it's doing baseline value. Maybe baseline value is hidden under here. It's not showing you all the measure. Let me bring this out a little bit, see if that makes a difference. Ah, here we go. So basically it looks like it's doing total sales minus the baseline value, which is basically total sales if it's 2016, 2017, which is not what we asked. So maybe it's because I've put difference. Maybe let's try between. Oh. <laughs> so this is just giving us the result. Because so basically it's saying now it's given us 2017 number because it's basically going if it's, why has it got discount? Total sales where year and order date is greater than 2016. Discount is less than, where did I even say discount in here? Mm. This is something that still needs a lot of work, but I guess it's still early days. So let's try instead of tween, let's do total sales, 2016 versus. Let's give this one last go and see what we get. Now it's given us a percentage. Yeah, so total sales minus total sales where the order date is 2017. So no thing of 2016 in that. Okay, let's move on to something maybe a little bit more simple. Again, just to check it out. Let's try number of orders in 2017. If we do that, I click off, generate. So number of orders 2017, that is number of orders. That is correct. Number of gives us enough here. And then what it's done, it's basically done distinct count of the order ID on keep filter to get 2017. Yep, so that's correct. All right, let's see if this works now for the California one. So the California one, we have how many orders? And that is 344. So say for California, we go generate. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, there we go. So that one works as well. Let's try and see if we can get this. So what we got here, that is product name. Product name, yeah, so that's product name. So if we try, it's the largest selling product name in 2017. Okay, let's try this. Anyway, no, that isn't correct. And why is that not correct? Okay, it looks like in the DAX, it's saying it's picking max. So it's not actually working out the actual total sale. So it's probably how I've worded this, which product name has the highest total sales in 2017. Now let's see. Whee, look at that. So that's definitely correct. And looking at the DAX, that is quite a hefty bit of DAX you got written there compared to the other ones, which were just basically either variables or summing with some filters on it. This one's actually going, here's your table, getting all the sum for the period of, is it actually doing? Do you know one thing it's not doing actually? It's not doing 2017. It's correct, but it's probably the same across all. So if I say if I removed all, yeah, it's the highest selling product across the board. So it actually hasn't given me 2017. So it's not as clever. However, you could just add a filter in end there. But yeah, that's quite an impressive bit of DAX. It's managed to just work out on the basis of what you've asked. 
So this seems to have some good functionality to it, but as we saw, it doesn't always work. And actually for you to be able to even kind of understand what's sort of going on here, you really need to understand DAX. So really you still need to learn DAX to be able to utilize this tool. And I'm sure like over time, if Power BI end up keep putting more and more effort into it, then it could become really, really powerful. At the moment, it's early days. So I wouldn't trust it enough. And especially with the thing of where it sends out your data outside of your country that you just play around with it with dummy data for now. And anybody, if you've used it already and had a little play around, figured out any sort of like weird wording that you need to use for Power BI service to understand. So the suggestions come through correctly and put them in the comments below. But yeah, you, it, it's really, it's really, it's really powerful and really useful, but I would say stick to writing DAX, stick to learning DAX. And if you're still unsure about how DAX works, then I'll advise check out this video over here where I cover some of the DAX functions that you'll find useful and use quite a lot in any of your reporting.